Locals in the area actually franchise these gen stores, which is just one of many industries that have grown up out of... I'd say one of the big challenges on the film was trying to push what was really a low-budget production to try to do basically what we could do to make it feel like the scenes we were choosing to show indicated a lot outside the frame. That this was really part of like a larger system in motion. It was 26 days over the course of July 2019 when we shot Lapsus in upstate New York, about three weeks in the forest, and then in Queens for a week. There's a good spot back there that I just found to peeing also. Clean over the hill, down there. The thing that made me cool, Pat, if we're gonna get out, give a little pop to this, mm -hmm. is is a, is a kind of some good gas over the hill. The robots were a main reason why we were even able to make the film when we did, because we knew we didn't want to use special effects and we wanted to do it all practically. But so then it was kind of a question of how much we would need to fabricate ourselves. Get it moving. But then we were very lucky to come across Rex, which is a rugged six-legged robot. It was built by Dan Kodacek's lab at the University of Pennsylvania. And this particular iteration of Rex that was used in Lapsus was built for the Museum of Science and Industry's exhibition called Robot Revolution. And so we were just grateful that the museum could loan us the robots for Lapsus. And students from Dan's lab joined us on set with Rex, and they were able to fit in their time overseeing all the robotics on the set of Lapsus while completing their summer research at Penn. And so we made a trip down there, and Alex Lindy took measurements of the Rex, and he fabricated the instrumentation that sat on top of the base. And then when it got to shooting, the thing was we didn't have much time to rehearse or prepare, but the Rexes ultimately couldn't have performed better. And I think we all thoroughly enjoyed their personalities and they're sort of becoming another character in the film, truly. You want to cue me then to stop the robot just because I can't you see can't how You can't really see, yeah, okay. He's getting to the door, so like if you do... I'll, I'll give you the cue. Right. Now that the film has come out, we got a chance to show it to the lab and to talk about the way the robots were represented in the film to get their feedback and especially ended up talking a lot about the significance of the ending of the film. We don't want robots to be the bad guys, or if, if they are, what are we all doing? <laughs> um, and so asking that question is, I think, actually an important piece of at least what I saw in that film, but maybe that's because I'm biased towards uh, <clears throat> robots being a good thing, is that the robots aren't the problem necessarily. It's the system that's the problem more specifically, and the, the things that allow that system to use robots as a tool to create issues. Can, can I add something um, uh, from the way I view it? I really like the way how um, Ray goes into that house and uh, um, he charges his thing and the, the owner just came out and said, uh, we don't, do not provide charging. But in the end, the robot came in and the owner put it to the charging site. It almost seems like um, the owner trusted the robots more than trusting human and I, I don't know if this is intentionally but I feel like it's it's a it's a it's trying to show us that um, a robot in the end is a tool that has no good or bad and um, uh, and people might trust it more because human is unpredictable but uh, robots is something you can predict.